the spirit was moving over the water, the spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, as the spirit was moving over the water, the spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, so come
And people were had already started recognizing him as the Messiah. And he had already been doing power and his love for people. And so when he came in to Jerusalem for Passover, people recognized him as the King of Kings. And as he was coming in to the city, people were waving palm branches. And it was a it was a gesture of honor, like for royalty. <laughs> kind of like what we would do have a parade and throw a picker tape. They, they had palm branches. So we're doing that because this week leads into next week, which is what? Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday or Easter. So uh, we're celebrating Jesus as King of Kings when we have our palm branches. We're recognizing him even today by, by this. So we're glad that you're here this morning. we got a couple more people coming around the corner. Oh, hi, Ann. How are you? God bless you. We do have a ticker tape. Oh, we do. Look at this. An actual ticker tape. So, why don't you go ahead? So, yeah, we're going to sing uh, Hosanna. Um, I'm sure everyone knows the song. But, uh, it's going to be Hosanna, let every heart prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, Hosanna, let every heart declare that he is Lord. Sing. Hosanna. Hosanna.
is lost Let him replace I'm making way Let your glory fill the room Let every heart Rise from the tomb
life changing. Life changing, grave shaking, dead raising power in the room. Heart healer, health stealer, no ceiling power in the room. Life changing, grave shaking, dead raising power. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your power, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Lord. We've been brought near by your blood, the word says. We just thank you that there's so much power, Lord, and we plead that over our lives. I just plead that over my life. I plead that over this church's whole body here this morning, Lord. We just plead the blood. We thank you for your power. Thank you, Father. Amen.
the generations for over 2,000 years have been recognizing Jesus as Messiah. And I was just sitting here realizing how could that be except but the fact that he is the Messiah. I mean, there have been all kinds of popular people that have come through history that were, hit, that were famous during their season, but you don't even know their name. But with Jesus, you can't forget Jesus. And it's simply because he's changed lives. He, he rose out of that tomb and he, he's still alive and he's still changing lives. People are still recognizing him today like they did that day over 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem when they were recognizing him as, as king, king of kings, lord of lords. I don't know who he is to you, but I wanna just ask, who is Jesus to you? If he is just a philosopher, I'm gonna tell you there have been a myriad of philosophers that have come and gone and you don't know their name. If he was just a teacher, I'm gonna tell you there's been millions of teachers that have come and gone and you don't know any of their names. It's because he's more than a philosopher. He's more than a teacher. He is savior. And if you're here today and you've never known Jesus as Savior, then I want to give you an opportunity to know him as Savior. For some of you, he may just be some religious leader that you were raised up in, a, in church to believe in. I'm going to tell you, he's more than that. He gave his life for you. And through him giving up his life, you and I are able to have life and experience life beyond just what we feel in our physical bodies and in our emotions. He comes and gives us spiritual life, new life, Zoe life, everlasting life that you can experience while you're here and you'll get to enjoy when you leave this life. So just close your eyes. Who is Jesus to you? Who has Jesus been to you? Now, who do you want Jesus to be for you? Every single person in this auditorium and watching online has a need in their life. You need a savior. You don't need a philosopher. You really don't need a teacher. You need a savior. You and I need a savior, someone who that can come into your life and not only deliver and heal and rescue you from the things that you have been tangled up in, but someone who can give you a new life graced by the power of his Holy Spirit so that you can enjoy a brand new way of life. There isn't any teacher, any philosopher, or any religion that can promise you that. Jesus promises you that, but you have to know him. You have to recognize him as that. So Father, right now with every eye closed, I just want you personally, between you and Jesus, to acknowledge him. Who is he to you? You know, he says this in scripture. He says this to Peter. Peter, who do you say that I am? I feel like Jesus is saying that to all of us today. He's saying your name and he's saying, who do you, who do you say that I am? Chris, who do you say that I am? Can you answer him back? Confidently saying and knowing, Jesus, you are my savior. If not, I'm gonna give you three simple steps to receive him today as savior so that you can go on to living him, living has to have his life in you so that you can live the life he's promised you. Acknowledge, A, acknowledge your need for Jesus. Can you acknowledge your need for Jesus this morning? I'm standing here before you. I've been walking with the Lord a long time and there is a day that goes by that I don't, that I can say that 
I don't have a need for Jesus. I need Jesus every day, folks. Can you acknowledge that you have a need for Jesus in your life? And then B, do you believe that he is the Son of God? That he is the Mashiach, the Messiah, the one that was prophesied that would come into the earth to bring the salvation of God to every tribe and every nation? Do you believe and recognize Jesus as that? And then C, can you confess him? Right now, can you confess him as Lord of your life? Lord of your thoughts. Lord of your aspirations. Lord of your futures. Lord of every hope that you have dwelling inside of you. Can you recognize and acknowledge him as that? Confess him as Lord. Acknowledge, believe, and confess. It's the ABCs of the gospel. Very simple. Can you do that this morning? If you can say yes, then just receive Jesus. Recognize him as King of kings and Lord of lords for your life. Let him now come in and, and just swoop in with a grace from on high, a grace of his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth right now. Just receive it. Just say, I receive Jesus. I receive your Holy Spirit right now for my life so that I can leave this place today and go in a new powerful way. That I don't have to rely on my strength, but I can rely on the strength of your spirit moving through me to guide me in every step that I need to take every single day. Receive the Holy Spirit of God right now. Just say, come in, Holy Spirit. These next couple of weeks obviously are very foundational for every ministry that Jesus has in the works in the earth. Today we celebrate his kingship. Next week we're going to celebrate his resurrection. So today we're not going to have our typical prophetic flow time. We have, I just wanted to create an opportunity for you to, to have an opportunity to acknowledge and recognize Jesus personally for who he is. And then we're going to have some personal testimonies that have been prearranged at the end of Pastor Laura's teaching today to hopefully build your faith. So allow this service and allow this season where we celebrate Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday to add something to you that maybe you did not come in here with because God is not a religion. God is a person. He has a son and he has a living spirit, the Holy Spirit, that wants to engage and embrace each one of us so that we can live like we just sang to glorify him. I don't live to glorify Chris. I live to glorify Jesus. I allow him to have my life. I allow him to have my life. I lay my life down and let Jesus' life come into me so that he can be glorified. Can you do that? Let this next couple of weeks be a journey into that process if you've never allowed Jesus to be your life. Father, we thank you that you have made a way for Jesus to come to us, to rescue us. And you've also made a way for your Holy Spirit to come inside of us and live inside of us, to give us power, to give us wisdom, to give us grace and, and strength and courage. And we receive you, Father, today. We recognize you, Jesus, and we receive you. And we say, come, Holy Spirit, and we receive you so that our lives will look different from being in your presence today for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We like to take up our tithes and offerings as an extension of our worship experience. So if you have a physical offering that you want to you wanna give, we have these gray boxes up here at the front. You can come and put something in there. If you'd like to give online, we make it very convenient for you. Uh, you, can, you can go to our website, or if you don't have our church center app, you can go there, and we make it very easy for you to give there. Your giving doesn't just go to pay bills, okay? It does do that but it goes to continue the ministry of Jesus in the community, okay? So we thank you for your investment in what God is doing
through your tithes and offerings. We promise to you as a leadership team to spend it wisely and openly because we want to glorify God with every penny that comes into this place. Thank you for giving. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Mm. God is so good. And he loves you so much. He wants to give you every tool and every resource you need to be full of life and joy and peace so that you can go out into that dark world and shine for him. Let him do that. Amen. We're going to get our children ready. Do we have children in the house? They're going to have a special time with some teachers back there. So children, we just release you back with our children or with our teachers. <laughs> children with children, that may not go too well. We need to release them with, with teachers. <laughs> Thank you for volunteers that are back there working with the, our, our kids today. We're going to take a couple of minutes and transition the worship team out and get the stage set for Pastor Laura to, to teach this morning. But I'm going to tell you, we need to give honor where honor is due. Come on, let's get on our feet. Let's show some love for this team that got in here this morning and led us into the presence of the Lord. Come on, let's come on. Come on, let's be extravagant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you guys. Thank you for, for your sacrifice. Two minutes, we'll be back with you with a message. Love on each other. Get to know somebody. There's some people here that you've never met. So get to know them on a first name basis. Can you do that?
to her during worship, but wasn't worship extra awesome this morning? Thank you, honey. Yes, it was incredible. Well, happy Palm Sunday. Wow. It is a happy day, unlike when you say a uh, happy day of atonement, you know, or something like that. Like, this is a happy day. And I'm thinking about how this whole week is so important from today until Good Friday, we've got from the Palms to the Passion. And then we begin the celebration of the resurrection. But we really want to pause today and just take a look at, kind of a, with a new spin, uh, exactly what it is that happened today on Palm Sunday. It was about 30 AD. But first, I think we have a, an, an important announcement. Let me, let me just see. 
what is this? I think it's kind of old news, but we need to say it in this house. Yes. Look what the Lord has done. <laughs> so excited. Okay, they don't like being the center of attention. Go to the next picture. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's already up there. Wonderful. All right, little peanut. I see the jelly bean, little jelly bean. Um, are you announcing the gender? And it is a, a girl, just like Pastor Brittany. And so your best friend is having your best friend's best friend. Or your, ch your baby, you're having, say it. You're having your best friend's best friend. Is that it? Oh, baby besties. I love it. Thank the Lord for just answered prayer. Uh, Carrie, I'm remembering how, you know, you wanted to just overcome some hurdles from the past and you asked to go through our Finding Freedom program. And I mean, you were determined, like I'm gonna grab a hold of everything that God has for me. And while there, someone had a word about a man in a black truck. And then you met a man with a black truck. And we were all like, Carrie, there are a lot of men with black trucks, like be careful, you know. <laughs> and now a wedding and a baby later, we are just absolutely thrilled, are we not? <laughs> It's going to be a great fall at the East Gate. Do it Daddy's birthday, right? Early October? Okay. Wonderful. Well, uh, we are going to look at the Palm Sunday message today. And, you know, it is in all four Gospels. There's only, I think it's ten stories that made all four. And this is one of them. And I, have you ever really looked at the way the different, if you've looked at these 10, the way each gospel handles the same story differently or any of the stories. Matthew basically focuses on what Jesus said. Okay, let me get this. I've actually, I'm using Stephanie's notes right here. That would not be good because that's gonna be very truncated and we'll be out in like 10 seconds. Um, but so let me back up, let me back up just a minute before we go to that. Well, actually, no, keep that up there. Matthew focuses on what Jesus said. Mark focuses on what Jesus did. Luke focuses on what Jesus felt. John focuses on who Jesus was. That's really important for you to remember. Um, you can screenshot that if you want to or, or take a shot of the screen with your, with your camera. And just remember that as you're reading through this, as you're reading through the Gospels at any time. Uh, but first, today is also Purim. These last three days we have been celebrating, celebrating, uh, we're all like on a, most of us on a 40 day fast, but these last three days commemorate, there we go, the fast that Queen Esther called when her whole people, our whole nation uh, was in peril. And she went before the people on, or she went before uh, on behalf of her people to the king and risked her life on behalf of the Persian Jews. This was about 400 years before Jesus. And, uh, and she succeeded and everybody fasted and prayed and she had just the right words when she needed them and just the amount of favor when she needed it. And the Jews were saved. And she didn't even wanna be there. She wasn't even supposed to be married to the king. He basically had a beauty contest and chose a new wife and she won. And she was very young and taken away from her family. And so we have to remember that message, that in the middle of this week, this weekend right here, if you are in a place where you're, th you're like, I, I just, I don't even know why I'm here. I didn't wanna be here. I didn't ask to be here. God, are you the one that put me here? And then all of a sudden you figure out the reason why you're supposed to be there and you lean into it and you ask God to give you just the right word at the right time, just the right favor at the right time. <laughs> you ask him to do these things and, and you see him do them. And you're tapping into the heartbeat of Purim. Well, we'll talk more about that a little later, but um, just keep that in mind as we go through today's text and we're really talking about Jesus and, and you know, as, as I said, why we celebrate Palm Sunday. But just remember throughout the whole thing, without Esther, there'd be no Palm Sunday. Without Esther, there'd be no Christmas. Without Esther, there'd be no Easter because she saved the Jews. The Jews went on for our, uh, our king to come from, amen? All right, so I want to read 
the story of when Jesus uh, comes into Jerusalem. But before we do, before we read about that entrance, we could study any of the four gospels, as I said. Um, Matthew 21 covers it with 11 verses. Mark 11, uh, same thing, 11 verses. Luke, 11 verses. And John gives it four little verses. It may be five, I can't remember. Um, But I want us to go ahead now and read this. And this is from the NIV today. I usually don't use that, but I love the way that Matthew words this here. So let's just start at the very beginning. Matthew 21, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him Uh, And those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. We did this this morning, right? Say it with me. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered uh, Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Don't you love God's word? So there's a a little phrase in there I want you to look at. I think it's back in three. And it says, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. Talking about the donkey and the colt. Have you ever thought about if Jesus has any needs? I mean, he wasn't needy, but does does he have needs? I was remembering maybe like John 4 when he told the woman at the well he wanted a drink. But he didn't say, I need a drink. You know, we all know why he was there. He was there to give living water. And, of course, we know in John 19 where he, again, expressed thirst. He was on the cross. They gave him vinegar. Um, but, But beyond that, do you ever see a time in Scripture when he needed, when he said, go tell them this and tell them if, if they ask you, say, the Lord needs them? Well, we also know that the Lord likes chips, tortilla chips, um, because he actually, this is one of my very favorite movies, did you not tell them that they were the Lord's chips? So we know that the Lord loves chips. You guys, would you believe that movie was um, made 20 years ago next year? Yeah, it was released in 2006, but it started being made next year. That freaked me out. But anyway, we do know that the Lord likes tortilla chips, evidently, according to this movie. <laughs> Um, for the for the orphans. So, but why did he need a donkey? Why? Why a donkey? Why did he choose the colt too? It's really interesting because we're going to take a look at that in just a second and explore why. I bet you've never noticed it says, and he rode them. You're like, how did that happen? How did that happen? What are you, what are you talking about? Man, this is so good, guys. But first, I want to compare Jesus' coronation and what we did this morning and what we have uh, re- just read about and what happened, you know, in the Gospels and, and how we just extravagantly poured out our worship on him here today. And I want you to take a look at some footage uh, that I've found of previous monarchs' coronations. And let's see how they compare. Okay, so first of all, this, this first one, uh, this is crazy, guys, October 3rd, 1896. Can you believe we have footage from the 1800s? This is Queen Victoria, and w- I mean, this is not a coronation. This is actually just she's showing up at Balmoral Castle, 
Um, but I thought it was interesting. That's a smaller castle. It's more intimate. And she still has this entourage of people that are coming. Now, this is actually June 20th, 1897. And this is just, um, this is her, not just, this is her diamond jubilee. This is her 60th year reigning celebration. And um, it's, you can see her in there barely. She's the one she just passed in the black she was always wearing black in the end of her life. No, there she is. She was always wearing black. You see her little head right there? Um, and we have this footage that just to me is amazing. There's another one uh, from April 20th. Oh, no, this is more. Look at all that's following. Jesus didn't get anything like this. June 20th, 1897. I can't believe we have footage. There she is again. And there are footmen on each, you know, carriage. She had nine children. She did all that she did in the world in 63 years, but still had nine children. So, and I sped this up for you. You're welcome. Uh, and then here's another one, April 23rd, 1898. And this is her arriving at a garden party at a British path. She's just going to a party. Wouldn't you love it if this all happened when you're just going to a party and people are like, yay. And, and. This was when she actually arrived, I believe this was, yes, this was April 7th, 1900, when she went to Dublin, when she went to Ireland. And she would be dead within nine months here. Um, this was her January 22nd, 1901 funeral. That is her casket, and they carry it out here in just a moment. And then uh, I'm going to switch over to a beautifully extravagant coronation for Queen Elizabeth on June 2nd, 1953. And I just got snippets in here. Hers was the first coronation to actually be filmed. Thanks to Philip. Prince so happy, don't they? Now, this and is uh, Prince William and coach. Princess Kate. This was on Moves their wedding. Away this was not a coronation. From West Door. But it was, look, look at the fans. Just they show up, they come to Windsor the city. Graves and look what pulling happens. the carriage. And I'm constantly and struck by, by the, the parallel and between Jesus and the advanced the point and, and the first this. division of the captain. And so it's just, look at this. Like they're all so excited. To see them, you can turn the volume up, Steffi, because I do have some. There's some of these that have a little bit of uh, music or whatnot to it. Look at that. Now that is them arriving into. Uh, that's Buckingham Palace. No, that's going up to Westminster Abbey, sorry, to be, or they had just been married. Okay, now this is Queen Elizabeth and her coffin. One of the first visits the Queen made in 1952. Going into Holyrood And becoming the monarch Castle, succeeding Holyrood her Palace. father was to come here to Scotland this to stay death. at Holyrood to Wait visit the people the, of Scotland. The people that, all the guards and everything. In 1953, everything. she attended a service of thanksgiving at St Giles Cathedral the place where her body will lie at peace. September 11th, 2002. Sped this up for us, but I mean, Nancy and I stayed up all night and watched this. Like, I remember texting you. <laughs> we were just amazed at the passing of the baton. All right, let's come to present day. This is when President Biden met King Charles, came to, uh, this is actually Windsor Castle. Uh, we will be there on April 4th. Balmoral was a moment ago. We'll be there on April 5th. Uh, and this is when he met King Charles. Everybody was giving him a hard time because he walked in front of the king. I'm like, if I were to show up in front of royalty, I would forget how to walk. Like, I don't know that I would know what to do. But, um, but so this is really fascinating to me, uh, the combination of honor for a president and a king. Now, here's actual footage from Nissan 10, King Jesus entering uh, Jerusalem. 
Hey everybody, look at me, I have the holiest donkey in the world. Turn it up. I have never had so much fun in my entire life. Alright, stop, stop. Just get me off this thing. I walked on water, I think I can walk to the door. Hey Jesus, will my donkey get to heaven now? Just, just one moment of peace, please. What in the name of me is going on in here? There's that. There's that. Oh man, we're gonna get it. You're not supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be praying and reading your Bible. And you guys. How do you expect to get to heaven by playing board games? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's cool. Hey, guys. And these three think they can get into heaven just because they dress like the wise men. Mm, how much money do you have? Oh, there you go. Mm. One coin. Are you serious? Well, I can, I can get some more. No, I'm sorry. You'll never get into heaven now. You, you had your chance and you blew it. Well, I guess I'm gonna be going then. <laughs> that sucker doesn't even realize I kept his coin. <laughs> Vintage 21, my kids used to watch that when they were growing up, and uh, it's poking fun at uh, giving a humorous look at some of the things that Jesus had to do. Imagine, he, is, he's, he knows he can walk on water, and yet he's riding on this lowly donkey uh, into the city streets, not into a palace like that. But do you see the difference? There's such a contrast Jesus deserves all of that coronation uh, drama or whatever you want to call it. Like it was a huge fanfare and, and yet he, he didn't want that. He could have given them instruction and said, okay, I want you to go get a marching band and a mariachi band and, you know, all of his favorite bands, um, ticker tape, confetti, here I come. No. And... It's amazing to me when you look at Jesus coming into that side of the city and then on the other side of the city, I'm sure, the opposite side in the west, Pontius Pilate, like when he would enter, there'd probably be all of that. All of that that we saw for the Roman governor uh, of Judea, Samaria. He would enter in, you know, at the head of a column of imperial uh, cavalry and soldiers coming in on either side of him before him after a huge procession and it's just two totally different visions of God's kingdom and the world's kingdom this kingdom upside down that to gain wealth you don't hoard you give to get your life you have to die symbolically speaking, but then in the next life as well. And so uh, I love this, just this polarity as we watch all of this. And, um, and I was really struck by the fact that not even God the Father said, my son deserves that. I'm going to make this really bougie. I'm going to make this really big. Have you ever said, Lord, I, I've I've served you, I've loved you. I've said this like in the last 30 days. Lord, I've loved you, I've served you. Couldn't you just have, you know, Mar Mary and Martha. If, if Lord, if, if you had arrived earlier, my brother wouldn't have died, that kind of thing. You, you'd start saying to the Lord, couldn't you have done that for me? Listen, he even withheld from his own son that kind of, it's really idolatry, like people worship. Now I wanna give honor where honor is due. And when we go over there next week, we'll leave a week from today, we'll, we, go every five, we go every anniversary divisible by five and we do all, this, all the stuff. We love that culture and we love um, just the thought of uh, kingship. I don't ever, I did not ever fully grasp the kingship of Jesus until I went over here and saw how they treated kings and queens. And I thought, oh, okay. I literally came back that first time, however many, fives ago 
And I, and I remember standing in church and just, I was just bowing. I was like, I'm so happy to be in your court today, Jesus. Thank you so much. I mean, it was, it really did something in me. And so I'm happy to, to honor, I'm happy they honor their leaders. But keep in mind that, that even God, the father didn't orchestrate that for his own son. It happens in America too. We don't have coronations, but you remember, uh, even in our politics, have any of you ever watched a national convention? Let's go ahead and show this. For one, of, for one of the like Democrat or Republican candidates, they always have this big celebration. Remember this moment? You can turn up the volume. Turn up the volume. We were in a hotel and uh, stuck in Arizona, remember? And so, look at this. So, he's coming out to a WWF. I know. And now look at all these people. And at the end of this evening, I mean, there was so much confetti, I would have hated to be a janitor. All of that for, that's in America. So we don't have all the coronations, but we have plenty of pomp and circumstance, do we not? But with Jesus, there was no, no real crown, no guards, not even a horse, just a donkey and a colt. And we're going to look at why, because all the gospels, although they all mention this, we'll look at this in, in just a moment, but Matthew's the only one that mentions the donkey and the colt. And why is that? Well, it's to fulfill a prophecy. Look at Zechariah 9, 9. We read it in Matthew 21 a moment ago. Uh, it's what was being quoted by Jesus when he was talking about coming into the city, giving the instructions for um, the disciples and what they were supposed to do because he told the two of them to go get it, remember? But he said to them when he did, I'll just read it from Matthew 21, say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And so he's basically saying from Zechariah 9, 9, he's quoting it exactly from Zechariah 9, 9 and saying, I'm he, I'm the one, I'm the one who comes. Uh, you know, he wasn't saying bow down and worship me, but he is, he's letting everybody know. Now, you guys, I'm going to tell you something. Like, I think about how many hundreds of messianic prophecies that Jesus has fulfilled. Sometimes I have a hard time remembering what street something's on. All right, can you imagine? He's like, oh, wait got to get two animals. Okay, is it a horse? No, 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 no. Was it a tiger? No. Oh, go get a donkey and a colt. Like he, there was specific, and it was because he knew he was supposed to fulfill this prophecy. He knew that he was. There were many prophecies that he could not have fulfilled himself that no one can self-fulfill, like where he was born, what he would be named. Remember Pastor Jason Surf and what, sir, a sermon, what's his name? So there were certain things that Jesus could not just go, well, I'm going to fulfill that and be the Messiah. It, it, we didn't have it that way. But I'm just telling you, it would be hard to memorize hundreds even if, you, even if you were trying to apply for that job. I think it would be very, very difficult. So I want to ask four questions of you. Today's sermon actually isn't very long because I'm leaving room for the testimonies. But I just want to ask you these four questions. How many donkeys did Jesus, Jesus ride? How many donkeys? Well, let's look at this comparison, okay? <clears throat> because we've got them all laid out for you here, and you can see what's underlined. Matthew says a donkey tied and a colt. Untie them, bring them. He brought the donkey and the colt. He sat on them. Mark says you'll find a colt, untie it, 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 it. So there's one, singular. Luke, same thing. Colt, tied, it, it, the cold, it, the colt, it. And then John 12 <laughs> just says, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. Now, folks, I am, I am telling you, this is a perfect picture of how Pastor Chris and I communicate. <laughs> I'm telling you every day of the week. Because, you know, I'm, I'm all like, now listen, go to this village. It's the one right in front of you. Um, immediately you're going to find this and that. And somebody may say something to you, but listen, repeat after me. Say these exact words. 
and finishing telling them what to do when they get it. And Pastor Chris is always just, yeah, Jesus found a donkey and sat on it. And that is probably why, why we work so well together. But you have to ask yourself, even amongst the disciples, why did some of them tell it one way, plural, one of them told it plural, two of them was singular, one donkey or one colt, and the other didn't even mention this part at all. The story, but not this part. So on to my second question as we answer that. Two, what is the significance of the colt never being ridden? The fact that the colt has not been ridden represents sacrifice. In that culture, only unused animals were used for sacrifices. Jesus rode on an animal that was untouched. So you see here, uh, you got the picture of the, the mama. She's in the back, a little bit of a sagging belly. A colt is a male donkey that's under four years of age. So I would imagine that he wasn't too small or Jesus would not have injured him. Peter would have come after him and, you know, said that he was abusing pets. But this is, uh, and the other thing was, I was fascinated to learn that archeolo archeological digs and research findings of funeral wear from this period of time leads some people to believe that Jesus was about 5'5". Five, five. Yes, who knows? We'll know one day, won't we? But uh, so, so if he's riding on a young colt, he chose the young colt. So why did he do that? It's a symbol of sacrifice. It was untouched. Number three, what's the spiritual meaning of the cult? Well, the donkey cult is the only animal specifically stated in the Bible that's redeemed by a lamb. Like in the Levitical sacrifices, like the firstborn sons, Jesus, who was the firstborn son of God, he is sinless, pure. He's the only redeeming lamb. So Jesus rode a donkey cult to fulfill both the prophecy from Zechariah 9.9 9 and the Levitical law. He was fulfilling prophecy and law. Uh, isn't that amazing? Only a lamb can redeem a cult. So how on earth do you redeem a firstborn donkey? Well, because the donkey is the beast of burden that, is, uh, that made humans, really human survival possible, it is redeemed by giving a lamb to the priest in the temple. The donkey is a bridge between the material and the holy, and is redeemed like the firstborn son, no less. If it is not redeemed, it must be killed. The donkey must be killed if, if, it, if a lamb is not given to redeem it. So I have this cute little uh, illustration for you. I think it's sort of how we should look at it. There's Sinbad the donkey, welcome to heaven, and he goes, bah, he's with me. So the lamb steps in to help redeem this beast of burden. If there is no lamb, the donkey perishes. So this is really, this is interesting to me. You can go back to the sermon slide or I will be upstage for the next five minutes, but isn't that cute? Um, this is interesting to me that, that Matthew specifically says there were two. Now guys, Matthew was the accountant. So I think we can trust what he said. He was the tax collector. And, um, and, and part of me wonders if the journey, if maybe the, the cult wasn't weaned or he needed to be with his mom or something like that. Um, but for whatever practical reason, there were two. There are some people who believe that he rode the don that the donkey was ridden so far and then he got on the colt to fulfill the prophecy. We will never know until we get to heaven, <clears throat> but it's fascinating to me that he went to such care. He could have just walked, couldn't he have? He could have just walked into the city limits. No, he was supposed to ride. When you ride a, a horse, when a leader rides a horse into a city, it is a sign of triumph and war. When you ride a donkey, in this culture, when you rode a donkey into a city, it was a symbol of humble leadership. Everything about this day, which uh, Nissan 10, I believe, translates to April 18th. They believe it was April 18th, 30 AD. So 
Make of that what you will. Beautiful spring day. They go and get the donkey and the colt. They bring it. <clears throat> and Jesus, because remember, it did say he rode them both. And you can't do that simultaneously. <laughs> so that's why uh, some interpret that to mean that he actually just rode one and then to fulfill the prophecy, got on that colt and came. And that's why you see pictures of Jesus on a colt and it's kind of smaller. He looks almost huge in it, but it's because it was, it was a young colt and it had never been ridden. That's why it was so important. So now here's the most important question of all today. What is your donkey and what is your colt? What is it in your life that Jesus is saying, untie and bring it to me? Because the Lord needs them. The Lord needs these things. So as I was reading and thinking, Lord, how am I going to, okay, Palm Sunday, and here we go, I'm going to preach another. I think I actually preached last Palm Sunday, and I preached on, or maybe two years ago, on palms and the worship and what have you. But that phrase stood out to me this time. And if they give you any trouble, just tell them the Lord needs them. So I want you as in the next few minutes as we listen to some, test, some of the testimonies in this church, I want you to be thinking about what your uh, person, place, or thing, I don't know if it's animal, mineral, or vegetable, whatever it is in your life, physical, emotional, spiritual, uh, that needs to be untied and brought to the Lord. And, and it, I'm not just talking about some sin. It might be something you need deliverance from, but man, it also can be those good things that we don't want to give up to him, that we don't want to admit that he gave us anyway. And one of the things that we have been doing as a church specifically, uh, fasting, this is day, what is this, 33, 34? I've lost count, but how's everybody doing? Good, because this is one of the things we've been focusing on in eating or drinking greens is the green. Remember the word, I'm gonna speak it over you one more time. Before there is green on the trees, there will be green in your bank accounts, your budgets, and this body. I am starting to see green on the trees. Now, it's Tennessee. We have plenty of deciduous trees, evergreen trees. There's still green out there. But, you know, your rows of Sharon's, your little, those things that have to come back every year. Um, the dogwoods are all white, but that will give way to green. And as we are waiting for the green and seeing it emerge, we as a church are waiting for financial breakthrough meaning your family wallet and then our corporate family wallet. And we're already starting to see it. We're already starting to see the budding of it. So I didn't have to go searching for testimonies. People are starting to come to us and say, oh my goodness, you'll never guess what happened. So I just very easily uh, texted just some of them last night and said, I want you to share today. So the first people I want to come on up are Scott and Jillian Estes. Where are they? Where are they? Are they still in the back? Okay, we'll let them go. Say, yeah, go tell them because they know they're, they're up. Um, and then the next one is, let's just bring you on up here, Elder David Gray, and you can tell us what's going on at your household. It's pretty creative. I love it. And... Uh, God's getting so creative in the way he's freeing up money in our house. Hi. Um, okay, so we've been... We, we've been engaged in the fast like everybody else. Um, uh, so I'll just kind of fast forward through my little tale here. I do construction work, have for the last, I don't know, 50 years or so. Um, and... About four years ago, I hurt my back, um, picked up a couple of buckets of concrete, tried to walk with them, and something went snap. And ever since then, my legs don't work right. 
we'll just put it that way. Uh, um, if I stand up too long, like by the time I get done up here in a couple of minutes, both my legs will be asleep. So it's, it's uh, th that's the crux of my problem. So uh, we went to the doctor and to see about fixing it, and they put me in one of those pipes and, you know, where they beat on it with a hammer while you're in there <laughs> and, and took a good look at my back. Anyway, uh, I don't know all the particulars, so the story's kind of fuzzy, but anyway, they looked at my back and said a couple of the things back there are out of line and have to be straightened out, and the fix for that was to take a grinder and grind off some of the inside of a couple of my pieces and my backbone and then screw them together, none of which sounded very good to me. Um, so uh, long story short, we walked away from the doctor's office with this idea that I was just going to have to live with this um, because, uh, one, the procedure requires about six months of recovery time where I cannot work, and we cannot do that. I, most of you all know I have a Christmas tree farm on top of my full-time job, and what I do, yeah, I, I work seven days a week, year round. I, I can't not work. So anyway, um, so the surgery was not even an option. And so we walked away from that. And to add insult to injury, there was an outfit that Don found that would actually do the surgery. How many hundreds of thousands of dollars? I don't know, but they would do that for free. It's like doctors doing pro bono work. They, they're like, yeah, we'll fix you up. Won't cost you a dime. But I couldn't get around the six-month downtime. So we just walked away from that thinking we're just going to have to live with it. The six months is up. This, this free procedure was runs out here now. And uh, during this fast, just out of nowhere, two or three days ago, Don receives a phone call from these people. And they said, hey, we see that your freebies are about to expire here. And they suggested to us, physical therapy um, on, on their dime. Um, and I've had three different people tell me over the last month's time, you gotta try physical therapy, you gotta try physical therapy, because I, they knew people that that had worked really well for. So we're looking at our budget going, can we do physical therapy? And the answer is no, we, we have no budget for anything. We, we just live week by week. We don't have insurance or any of that because I'm in construction and they don't do none of that. So anyway, we just financially, all of this coming back to looking for the green in the trees, financially, uh, we're stuck. We, we cannot afford to do anything. So um, this outfit calls and volunteers to do this uh, therapy thing for us for free. So, uh, thank you, Jesus. That's one. That's amazing. We continue to just stand with you, brother, for a pain-free back. We know that in 1 Corinthians 12, healings and miracles are two different gifts. God chooses to heal some instantly. Unfortunately, some of us pray for a miracle and get a healing instead, and it's a process. Two different entirely works of God that are powerful and useful, and, and we just pray, God, that you would put your hand on Elder David and bless this entire process. Yes, and heal him. This is, God bless you, uh, this is exactly what happened to you with your neck. They were going to do orthopedic, they sent you to an orthopedic surgeon, and the guy said, tell you what, I want you to go home and lay on your pillow and do these exercises these exercises and weeks later he was totally fine no pain since uh, no surgery you know so for real physical therapy and stretching and exercise and all that can help um, right Duncan I see Duncan looking at me back there like uh-huh uh-huh okay so now Scott and Jillian Estes come on down you're the next contestants on the job is right. Now, Jillian works for me. Yeah, come on up. I don't know that I could live without Jillian. No pressure. Okay, so tell us what's been happening in the Estes household. Okay. Um, I won't be up here long because we don't really like being <laughs> in front of people. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Scott and myself have been praying um, for our finances to shift. I know that we all have, and specifically for Eastgate. Um, and we, 
I think about five days into the fast, we had a, um, the company that he is now going to start with um, call us for a position for him. And um, we also were praying for like a schedule shift for us too, because with the job that he's at now, um, his schedule is completely like all over the place. He can uh, end the day at three or he ends it at 8.30. And so obviously for our family, like that's just not great. So anyway, uh, even a full week into the fast, the company that we had interviewed with at the end of the year called him again to interview for a new position, like a brand new position that had opened up. Um, and made a way for that, and they're amazing, godly people, um, incredible, (laughs) and yeah, so that is, I hear my child, Um, that is such a answered prayer for us, and I know uh, because of that, like for us, it's also an answered prayer for Eastgate, which is incredible, Um, and then the other thing was that we already have some medical bills um, coming up for this baby, Um, and the payment plan that came with it already, and it was like not doable for us uh, monthly wise. Um, And I ended up just calling and like begging the billing department because I could kind of tell they had like a protocol of like when they want you to finish paying. And I was like, listen, this is what we can do. Like that would be a huge blessing for us. And they granted it to us, Um, which was like, So, new job opportunity five days into the fast, and then the medical bills. Oh, that um, we had gotten the medical bills the day of that he had gotten the call for an interview uh, as well. So, I was like, well, Lord, you're doing something, so we're going to trust you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, medical bills is just very doable now every month, and then he has a new job with a reliable schedule. <laughs> And what I love about is uh, her, so the, the company called them, it's the Evils, company called them and said, we, we want to take you out and, you know, take you to dinner and offer you this job on the down low. They're like, we just want to go out. And they said, well, we would love that, but we're fasting. And they said, us too. You know, so I just, I love that uh, when the Lord does that, those little God winks in there, but you obviously got the job. And the day before that, you found out you're having a... Love you guys so much. (laughs) So much. Okay, so see, God sometimes adds finances, and sometimes he takes away through supernatural debt. Uh, Cancellation, they had both, uh, or a plan, but I loved it how Elder David was sharing about how God got creative in the way in which he brought something to them. He could have just dumped money in their laps. That would have worked too, I suppose. But he gets the glory this way. We were singing about that during worship. You get all the glory. I give you all the glory. How many times, Chris, have we been in a situation where I thought, well, if we made more money, then we could have just paid this 10000 that we need. We could have just had it there and written the check with a lot less stress and getting 40 people to pray and fast, you know. But it's pretty cool when somebody walks up to you and hands you the check for $10,000. And you're just like, Lord, only you get the glory for that. And I have stood there and said to people, no, 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 no. I I don't want you to do that. Like, what, you don't want my money? Like, they're offended. Givers, kingdom funders, I call them, are special people. I want to be one of them even more so in the future. All right, I want to hear from you, Nancy Sharps. Nancy Jane, get up here. God's been doing amazing things for you. I love you. Go for it. Okay, so my story has a little bit of a forerunner element to it, I guess. Um, God called me to a 40-day fast in the previous season for a job. Very specifically, we could tell that this needed to be a very specific position, maybe some ministry connected to it. So through a series of events, um, it came forth. And, uh, and then through some scheduling of when we did interviews and start dates, the start date of my new job happened to land on the very first day of the church 40 day prayer and fasting time. So it was, um, one of those where it wasn't just praying for a job <clears throat> it needed, I think, to be specific. And so through that, um, focus that came about, so that's it. 
And it was more money, more everything than you were imagining and benefits. And you walked in on the first day and there was a big gift basket on your bed. It's just been home for you. She's at Trevecca. I'm so excited for you. So excited for you. Yeah, all you Trevecca homies. Miss Nancy's in the house now. I love this too, how God, again, promotion, however he wants to get the money to you, just say yes. Whatever tree, it, you know, some trees are like bright green and some are dark green and kind of evergreeny looking. Whatever the tree is, just welcome it. Welcome those finances into your um, home right now. I know money never comes at a bad time. I'm just telling you, these people have been praying. Nancy, you're one of the only people I know that would do a 40-day fast before your church does a 40-day fast. Like, I, seriously. And, and there's a lot to be said for that, and yet God still tied it to it because you started the job on the first day of the fast. He tied it to us and what's going on here. All right, Bloom Hearts, come on up here. And uh, they have a multifaceted testimony, and it's just so beautiful. Yes, come up here, the BB. Who's, go who's going? Who's doing? Um, so most of you that know us know that um, Brandon and I have been in a really tough, tight financial season for the last, I guess, year uh, when I quit. I quit my very well-paying job at Vanderbilt to stay home with our kids, and we felt very strongly that the Lord was calling us to that. Like, we sought counsel from our pastors. It was a very peaceful decision, but it was a big step of faith, big leap of faith, and on paper, it really wasn't going to work, and so the last... I mean, since then, we have just prayed a lot of big financial prayers. We've prayed for, you know, income increase and just all the things. So anyways, uh, I had Rosie last July and we had some medical bills from that. And then she had an ER visit uh, last November and we don't have health insurance right now. We lost that with my job. So that out of pocket is not cheap. You know, if you are in the same boat, you know that. Um, so anyways, we fast forward to, I uh, think maybe right at the beginning of the fast, um, maybe that first week, I, we, we had been paying on those medical bills and I had decided to apply for financial aid for those. Um, and I had looked on the hospital's website and, you know, it shows you like the qualifications of who they'll cover and stuff. And we were like right above the bracket where they'll like start really helping you cover your bills and stuff. Like we just made slightly too much money according to the policy, like it was not gonna happen. Like we were not in the, we, we weren't qualified basically, but I was like, I feel like we should just apply anyways. Like maybe they'll see our efforts and discount it a little bit or something, you know? I, I really wasn't expecting much of it. I was just, I did it in faith and I've been praying on it, but I, I really didn't expect much to come from it. And honestly, it said like, this could take, you know, months to process. So I, this was not anywhere in my mind. Um, but this last Tuesday, I was on my phone and I get eight emails in a row. And I'm like, what's this? So I go and look and it's all eight emails from Vanderbilt saying that the subject line just says, your payment has been refunded. Your payment has been refunded. And I, at first I'm like, what is this? Like, I didn't even connect it to our medical bills because I wasn't even thinking along those lines. So I click into it and I go to our account and it shows me all the payments that we've already made. Every single one of them had been refunded. And then the balance, which had said like multiple thousands of dollars now said $0 right below yeah right below that um yeah right below that it literally said like financial aid write-off like paid in full or something like that I was like Jesus paid it in full but uh yeah literally went from thousands of dollars in medical debt to zero dollars and and everything got refunded to us that we already paid so okay hold on don't go anywhere just yet um I know because I'm your neighbor and I know stuff, and you text me extra stuff behind the scenes. Uh, there was also, she and I were uh, talking about, there's also another piece to this testimony. Which one of you is going to tell that? You going to tell it again? Yeah, Brandon's afraid of the mic. You want to sing it instead of saying it? <laughs> God is good. Okay, so tell us this part, because this is fascinating. I, I didn't know if I was going to share this, but I guess I am. <laughs> Um, so two weeks ago, I think it was about two weeks ago, it was like right at the halfway point of the fast, um, man, I'm going to cry. 
uh, there was, so this, this particular week, like right before the halfway point, we had really felt like God was going to do something big and we were praying. And, um, I think it was two Fridays ago. We had two completely random instances, totally separate instances of just random money being sent to us within 24 hours. And it was a good bit, you know, and we were so grateful. We were so grateful. We were rejoicing and we were praying, you know, for how the Lord wanted us to use it because we've got our laundry list of needs that we have. And so anyways, we were just excited. And that night I started praying and I was like, Lord, what do you want us to put this towards? And immediately this was not like, oh, maybe this is God's voice. Maybe, you know, it was no question. Like he hit this straight to my heart and he said, give it to so-and-so. And And that being a person that's in our life who has a big medical financial need. And so I heard this and I was like, okay, like, yeah, we'll give some of it to this person. Like how much? And he said, all of it. And so strong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, When she heard this from the Lord, I at the same time heard the same thing and we didn't talk about it yet. Um, And it wasn't that night. It was immediately after he received the second, the second anonymous donation. Um, and we both, we didn't say a word to each other. We're just like, oh, wow, thank the Lord. Like, this is amazing. And then um, about 20 minutes later, she was like, do you think we should? And I said, yeah, before she even finished her sentence. So, yeah, we, but like, yeah, so it, long story short, the Lord had spoke the same thing to Brando. And we were like, I mean, it, if you've ever been in that place like that, that will test you, you know, like we had, we had our needs and we felt like God gave us this money for our needs, you know, and here he's, he blesses us. And then not 20 minutes later, he's like, give it all away. And so like that, I mean, deep down, you know, y'all know our hearts, like we don't share this to boast or anything. Like it's a struggle, you know, like you have that choice. Like, am I going to trust the blessing or am I going to trust the one who blesses? Am I going to trust the provider or the provision? And, um, like my, my, I can't speak for him, but my flesh was at war there. I was like, God, really? Like, and I knew that I was going to do it, but I was like, wow, okay. Like, as I was pulling out the money of the bank, you know, to give it to this person, I was like, Lord, like, I trust you, God. I trust you. Sometimes it sounds like that, you know, sometimes it's not like, we trust you. Sometimes there's, you know, that struggle, but we did it. We did it. And we were happy to do it, but like, we were, you know, we were just like, my flesh was confused a little bit. And then not even two weeks later, we, we paid for somebody. 10 days later, we had helped this person with their medical need. And then not even 10 days later, God covers our medical need in full, in full. And yeah, the amount that we got in return from that, I mean, the refunds alone were already more than we had given away initially, but the the total amount of debt cancellation was almost 20 times the amount of the original money. So yeah, praise the Lord. And, um, Seriously, what, what our pastors always say, like, you can never outgive God, you know, you can never, ever outgive him. And if he calls you to step out like that and to give money or tithe more, he's done that with us before, whatever it is, you can trust him. You can trust him because he's a good dad and he's got the foresight to see things that we cannot see, you know, and sometimes he wants to work things out a certain way and create a beautiful picture that we could never come up with, you know, but he, he knows and he, he can do that, so. Just wanted to add, uh, you know, she said it, but he's a good father and he cares for us and takes care of his children, you know. Um, He's a faithful father and I just imagine how much more faithful he is to those that are faithful to him. Wow. You know, we have been in that place many times, but I'm thinking of in the last year we were there and... um, I think it may have been the Sunday that Donovan's parents were here and we were praying about different things here on the stage. Uh, the, the Teals are with them and the whole Teal family in Texas right now. Uh, but they were, they were leaving and they handed us a $100 bill and, and we needed it. We needed it. And on the way out the door, I don't remember which one of you it was, but I felt like the Lord said, give it to them. And it was really hard. Uh, By dusk, somebody showed up at our door and laid almost $1,000 out on our ottoman. They just came into our living room and just like laid it out. And well, they laid the envelope out and they started to, and we were like, hey, hey, wait, 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 (laughs) you know, are you sure, you know, that whole thing, you don't, you don't, it's hard to be the receiver sometimes, but 
they did it and it was 10 times what we had sown. And you sometimes worry that the giver to you is going to be offended. But no, I texted Pamela Teal and I said, listen, you will never guess what happened to your $100. They gave me seed. They gave me seed. The first one gave me seed and the second one, then God met my need. They planted their seed in good soil. That's right. That's true. I always say too, if what's in your hand is too small to eat, it's probably seed. So the Bloomharts had this huge need and what you got would not cover it. And our tendency is to go, oh, but I can make one payment. <laughs> Love Jesus, make it till the next one. Listen, we serve a God who is kingdom upside down. He doesn't enter your life on a horse. He's gonna enter it on a donkey and try to serve you and lead you and guide you. He's gonna tell you, you gotta give your way out of this situation. That is personal experience talking and I am their neighbors and I, I am telling you, it's in that same exact house we have experienced those same lessons. I had a, a vision one time during worship, I think it was in an outpour and I saw a river floating down our street from our house down, you were downstream. And I was like, Lord, I just feel like I'm looking at myself like 30 years ago through you guys. What a blessing. Um, so then I'm back to that same question as we close. What is your donkey and what is your colt? What is the thing that you need to untie this morning? It might be your tongue. Like, I don't know what it is that you're supposed to give the Lord, but you need to ask him, what is it you're telling me? to go do, and I'm gonna go get it, and I'm gonna bring it to you. I'm going to do that. For some of you, it might be, you know, your talents. Maybe you're hiding. Maybe you were in a church and they didn't treat you really well with your talents, or somebody made fun of you, or, listen guys, the church is full of imperfect people, including you. Just, just dust yourself off, Get up there and start serving again. Get up here and start serving again. Get out there and start serving again. Do not let a person who failed you stand in the way of what God wants to give you. So your talents, that might be one of the things you need to untie. It might be your womb. Sorry, I'm just going to throw it out there. And I know we got some single people here. We got some people who are past the age where they're like, Lord, I, I, I don't think I have anything, any more, more room in there. I don't think so. I mean, I have an aunt who in her 90s, I went to visit her nursing home and I was well past like childbearing age. And she's like feeling around in my stomach. Is the basket full? Is the basket full? And I said, no, Aunt Evelyn, it's not full anymore. But listen, that was a part of our faith journey. For some people, they try and try and try. They have no children or maybe they have one child and that was their faith journey. They were on a, play, on a place of really trusting God. For us, it was to let them keep coming. It felt so inconsistent with the prayers we were praying of, Lord, you have it all. I'm giving you full control. You said it best, birth control, birth control, like, Guys, the reason, this is a whole other sermon, but the reason that the Muslim religion, Islam, is overtaking, they're saying by, what was it, 20, 30, 40, I preached a sermon on this, that it will actually outnumber Christians. If you put Christians and Catholics together, it wouldn't. But many Catholics would not lump themselves in with us. And I've had them tell me that to my face. So if you separate us, Islam will soon be coming up in the ranks to bypass, to surpass Christianity. And you know why? It's not because of conversions only. They are outbreeding us. They're outbreeding us. So I am going to throw that in there. You can send me an email at laura at eastgateccf.com. If that offends you, I will send you a picture of all six of my kids and 15 of my grandkids. God will always provide the, the meat where he provides the mouth. Amen. And meat sounds good. Okay. So let's see what else. He needs your praise. We talked about palms today. We waved our palms. He needs your praise. Not because he's needy, but he needs you to untie your hands, get them out of your pockets, lift them in the air to him, and worship him. He needs your praise. He's not needy. He not, he's not out there going, I'm really discouraged today, and I need somebody to give me some affirmation. It's not that. It does something in you when you praise the Lord. It, it makes some kind of fire happen in here and it just burns everything out. 
everything else out. He needs your heart. And as we've heard today, he needs your financial resource. Yes, he does. He needs you to care for his bride. You're paying for the wedding, so to speak, okay? We're getting the bride ready. We're buying the dress anyway, getting it without spot and wrinkle. That's what he's coming back for. And that's the business we're in is we're over here with our spot cleaner and iron, and we're like getting every spot and wrinkle out in this thing, trying to get ourselves prepared for, not through works, but through readiness because he deserves it for the marriage feast of the lamb. I'm marrying Jesus, are you? I'm the bride of Christ, are you? All right, then let's act like it and invest in it. And I can't, I can't say it enough times, and Abby said it perfectly, you cannot outgive God. Well, again, that is the story of Purim. It's, it's triumphing over adversity. It's saying, Lord, we're going to perish. We're sinking. What's going to happen? And not just me, but all my people. It, it can feel like Esther when you're praying individual things that also affect something corporate. You know, we feel that. You feel that. Uh, and so I'm very, really encouraged as we wind down, like tonight will be the end of Purim, and I'm really encouraged that God's going to just step up and do even more. So if you have more testimonies, please send them to me at laura at eastgateccf.com. And I'm just going to add one testimony to it um, because for 104 days, I've been crying out to the Lord. I preached about my praycation. I've been calling down fire, guys, and guess what? It happened. I got a, a few clips here just to show you. God, we had a, a right in front of my prayer mattress this last week, we had a well, fire a first uh, that broke out in our say. chimney. It was a chimney fire. And, uh, and a big show it, of it. it. Listen, it was small, but it is, when it's your house, it's real. And I've always had this they plan that I was going to, first thing I was going to grab would be the kids' baby books. They're I've had it's this a plan for fireplace. years, for decades. Fireplace they sit in the fire. same place. There are bags. Say, everything goes fire. in. I run out. Y'all, my plan works. Oh, can't talk. It was great. So I figured out the plan worked. Uh, but they sent six fire trucks and 20 firemen. Uh, the fire department had nothing else to do that night. I felt so loved on. Okay, they're all there. They were just, they were amazing. But I'm telling you, I still to this day do not know if God sent the fire or the firemen. They're not on the same team. But I had been praying for fire. I'd been sending up smoke signals. I'd, I'd been doing all of that. And then literally, as I stood back behind my sofa and I saw the firemen about 10 them lined up in front of my, you know, fireplace right where that thing sits, right where you slept last night. Have if that had been there, they would have all been doing Lord. like this, like trying to put out the fire. Like we had moved it out of the way. Um, and they hacked a hole, you know, in our chimney and we're going to put the fire hose down it and extinguish everything inside. Uh, and I went in and started rolling, peeling back rugs and furniture, right, fire everything we got to push back. Lord have mercy. And then thank goodness this one fella, this one fireman down, he squatted down below. This is later. Um, and he was right in front of it and he yelled, stop, it's underneath, it's underneath. So it was under the fire, it was under there. Y'all, we found 34 so years worth of stuff so under there. Out here. <laughs> and, uh, and then it was coming out the vents. Is, it, the, he's explaining it goes up and then out. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and, he, and here's the other thing, y'all, is that we accepted a call so that night that we really didn't want to be on. We needed to be on. We didn't really want to be on. It was it was a difficult. It's just kidding. A precation match. Anybody ever do that? You look at the phone and you're like, right. And we did it. And we well, not only did it, on two and a half hours later, we prayed with the seven. person. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. It I love this person. There it is. Um, when we get through, it'll go but right it had been like there. decades, you know. And, oh, and you guys so much. we get rid through oh with gosh. all of that, get it all hemmed up, closed up, look up, and see the smoke. We would have been in bed if we had not taken the call, if we had not allowed well, ministry said, to interrupt everything. I would everything. get the baby books out and first. Our, we were talking yesterday. Uh, our smoke fast. detectors never went off. I've always had them kept all and right so together. We, don't know, we had had some problems with exactly them. He said he fixed them. And, uh, and yeah, they're the old baby books. Anyway, good. so that is um, part of my financial oh. testimony is that they sent out an insurance adjuster. Mercy sakes alive. Who was writing. This was unbelievable. He was writing on this little pad, and he, he 
Don't hear this isn't smell a vision because the stench is so bad. Okay, yeah. But you anyway, you all your baby rough. books are okay. Oh my goodness. I think we gotta replace wow. all this. We gotta replace Yikes. the chimney. Uh, <laughs> is that crack in the wall from the fire? Or Crazy. No, 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 no. That's just been there. Okay. Need ride down to fix that. Then he walked Thank around the house and took all kinds of pictures Those of repairs nice that needed to be done ever. out there. And uh, like an hour later, and he was a Christian, and we were talking about the Lord, and he knew we were pastors, and uh, about an hour later, he said, I, I don't have any control over what they do, but I'm writing this up really good. And uh, from what we can tell, they're going to give us a check. And, you know, a check comes in handy when you're planning a wedding, because I don't know if you heard, but we're planning a wedding. Anybody heard that? Where's Genesis? Is she in the back? There she is. I just seen your hat. So this is this is what I'm saying about the creative ways. You're like, do I want to pray for financial miracles if my house is going to catch on fire? <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm the kind of person I actually was encouraged by that. <laughs> oh, Lord, you have heard my prayers. You are moving, and you're taking care of us in the meantime. Um, and that house, it is God's house. It's just God's house, and the and the decades that we have lived there, we have a picture of us at our 10th anniversary party. We just invited all our friends over, and we were like, we made it, you know, and we had, remember, you had five fingers up, and I had five fingers up, and now we've been in there in our 20th and our 30th, and now it's going to be our 40th, and we're out of fingers and toes now officially, um, but God is good. He continues to save that house because we ordained it for ministry and told it that it had to function. That's the first claim we've had in all these decades. And the Lord will take care of you. He will get creative. So I urge you in these final days of the fast, this final week of the fast, if you have not fasted, fear not. The Lord is doing something right now. Jump in, jump in, and don't say, God, what do I have to give up? Say, what do I get to give up? What do I get to go uh, do less of this and spend more time in prayer? Plan your own prayation. Whatever you have to do, you will not outgive God. He is full of surprises. Look at this last series of pictures about this, uh, these donkeys. Did you know that on the back of every donkey there is a cross? Isn't that really special? They call it the donkey cross. Um, yeah, just go ahead and show these three really fast. So next time you're around a mule, oh, sorry, donkeys are different. But it, it, it's just really like a special blessing, they say. Um, or maybe why he chose it, who knows. So that's my, I want you to stand up on your feet. That is my challenge to you today. Uh, and I invite you to come to the, you know, come to the space right here and untie something. Just, just bring it up here. If it's bound or maybe you just need to open your palms and say, just take it. Just take it, Lord. It's yours. It's all yours. And, and bring it to him. Bring them to him. I believe there's more than one uh, thing in each of our lives. And... Just see what the Lord will do. He's going to get right on that thing. He's going to ride it into triumph for you. So that's what I ask you to do on this Palm Sunday, is to allow yourself to become engaged in the triumph of the interest of Jesus into your very life circumstances. He will do it. Amen. Father, we thank you for your abundant grace and we thank you Lord that even though you are our king and even though you are sovereign and even though you are deserving of a horse and a parade 